Hey everyone, it's Mark Hayward from Business Growth Talks. Welcome to a journey through the life of a tech titan, a visionary, and a philanthropist. In the next few minutes, we're deep diving into the world of Bill Gates, from his early days as a curious kid tinkering with computers to reshaping the digital era of Microsoft and now tackling global challenges through unprecedented philanthropy. He did a young programmer become the most influential figure of all time. Stay tuned as we decode Bill Gates' path to innovation, power, philanthropic activities, uncovering the impact and controversies of his extraordinary legacy. Please do hit the subscribe button and let's explore the world of Bill Gates. Bill Gates was born William Henry Gates III on October 28, 1955 in Seattle, Washington and is globally recognized as a business business magnet, software developer, investor, author, and philanthropic activity person. He is best known as, as the co-founder of Microsoft Corporation and the world's largest personal computer software. So let's deep dive into his early life. Gates showed an early interest in computer programming at Lakeside School. He wrote his first computer program, a version of Tic-Tac-Toe at the age of 13. In 1973, he enrolled in Harvard, where he met Steve Ballimer, who was later to join Microsoft and become its CEO. Bill's early life was an education was marked by a unique blend of intellectual curiosity and an affinity for technology and the environment that he fostered his talents. Born in 1955, he was the second of three children in an upper middle class family. His father, William H. Gates Sr., was a prominent lawyer, and his mother, Mary Maxwell Gates, was a school teacher and later a member of the board of directors for the first interstate bank system and United Way. He displayed early interest into reading and science. His family encouraged competition, whether it was playing board games or excelling in academics. He was driven to be the best. The, comp uh, the competitive nature would later play a role in his approaches to business. At a young age, he was known to be argumentative. His parents initially considered law as a future career path for him due to his skillful arg argumenting. However, Bates Gates' interest took a turn when he was introduced into computers. Gates exposed to computers began at Lake Lodge School, as I mentioned, an exclusive preparatory school in Seattle. The, the school uh, acquired a teletype terminal connected to a GE, General Electric, computer for students. Gates was immensely fascinated and spent much of his time working on the terminal. He wrote his first program with his, on this machine, a version of Tic-Tac-Toe. Gates, along with his schoolmates, formed a Lakeside Programmers Club to find bugs into the systems. They were eventually banned from exploiting system bugs to obtain free computer time from the computer center. However, they struck a deal with the computer center to find bugs in exchange of extra computer time. So he then moved uh, going on to Harvard. Gates did so well in his studies, especially mathematics and science, that he often ended up skipping classes to pursue his interest in programming. Despite his parents' concerns, Gates was thriving on his own way. His SAT score, SAT score was 1590-1590 out of 1600, was a testament to his brilliance and secured him a place in Harvard. At Harvard, Gates didn't uh, have a definite study plan. He spent nights in front of his school computer and slept in classes. He standard freshman courses, he, he took standard freshman courses and remained more interested in computing than his studies. It was at Harvard that he met Steve Ballimer, who would later jo join Microsoft and become its CEO. He then also became friends with Steve Jobs around this time, marking the beginning of a long, complex relationship between the two tech giants. Another person I'd like to do a profile, a biography on as well at some stage, Steve Jobs. So he left Harvard because it was, and his desire was to start his own computer software company. He launched Altair 8800 microcomputer in 1975 by Micro Instrumental and Telemetry Systems, creating the opportunity he was looking for. Gates and his childhood friend, Paul Allen, saw that this was an opportunity that needed to create his own software. Gates left Harvard during his junior year to pursue his passion and a decision that led to the formation of Microsoft and turning point in history. So Microsoft's formation and its growth. 
1975, Gates left uh, Harvard from my, uh, and formed Microsoft with Paul Allen. The company's big break came in 1980 when IBM approached Microsoft to provide an operating system for their first computer. Microsoft bought an OS called ODOS for the purpose which they developed, later developed MS-DOS. Later, Microsoft introduced Windows, a graphical extension for MS-DOS, and became hugely successful. The advent and the creation of Microsoft was the, a, a historic event in personal computing, showcasing Bill Gates' vision, ambition, and business acumen. Microsoft's journey from a small startup to the world's largest software company is in the story of strategic decisions, technological innovations, and market dominance. So let's just cover a little bit more detail about the IBM deal. A significant turning point came in 1980. IBM, the leading computer hardware manufacturer at the time, was venturing into personal computers and needed an operating system. Gates and his team seized the opportunity, although they did not have an OS, an operating system ready for IBM's new computer. So they developed Windows. So while MS-DOS was a text-based operation system in the 1980s, saw a shift towards graphic user interfaces, primarily driven by Apple's Macintosh. To compete, Microsoft developed Windows, a graphical extension of MS-DOS. The first version of Windows released in 1985 was an immediate success. However, the release of Windows 3.0 in 1990 marked a significant improvement in the user's experience and become a commercial hit. So the expansion is interesting. So the late 80s and 90s, Microsoft expanded its product line to include various software applications. Microsoft Office, introduced in 1989, became a standard suite of all office productivity tools. The company also ventured into areas such as networking and development of web browsers and Internet Explorer. The, re the release of no Windows 95 was a major uh, event, integrating both MS-DOS and Windows into a single product and offered to improve its interfaces, multitasking and network capabilities. It solidified Microsoft's dominance in the operating systems market. But Microsoft's growth was not without controversy. The company faced numerous legal challenges, including antitrust lawsuits in the US and in Europe. Critics accused Microsoft of monopolizing practices, particularly concerning its bundling of Internet Explorer with Windows, seeming to have an unfair advantage over its competitors. His leadership and innovations. As CEO, Gates led Microsoft to dominance of personal computing with it with MS-DOS, and but he was criticized from many areas. But he has been admired for his vision and innovation within technology. Gates stepped down from CEO uh, of Microsoft in 2000, but remained a chairman and chief software architect in Ju June 2006. He announced that he would be transitioning to a part-time role at Microsoft and dedicated more time to philanthropic activities. He established the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which is one of the largest private charitable foundations. Now, one of the things that has come out in the recent years, which I'm going to go into here now, is the controversy about Bill Gates. So when he stepped down the, from the day-to-day -day role in Microsoft, Bill Gates shifted focus to philanthropic activities, primarily focusing on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. While his philanthropic efforts have been widely praised for their global impact, especially in the fields of health and education, they have been a source of controversy and criticism. This controversy can be broadly categorized into concerns about influence, a po a po approach to philanthropic activities, and broader conspiracy theorists. Gates' immense wealth and scale of his philanthropic activities have raised concerns about the influence he wields in the global health and development policies. Critics argue that the power held by the Gates Foundation in deciding funding priorities can disproportionately steer the agenda of international organizations and governments, potentially sidelining other important areas of public health and education that don't align to the foundation objectives. Gates' approach to these philanthropic activities, often described as philanthropic capitalism, has faced criticism. This approach 
treats philanthropic activities much like a business, focusing on measurable impacts, efficiency, and often favoring technological solutions to societal problems. Critics argue that in this method, whilst effective in some areas, can overtly simplify and may overlook and overvalue local community-driven approaches to development and healthcare. Some people have criticized Bill Gates point out that his uh, philanthropic activities allow him to exert influence with, without democratic accountability. They argue that his philanthropic activities can be the way for ultra-rich to bypass traditional democratic processes, deciding unilaterally how they would allocate significant resources. Additionally, there are arguments that his philanthropic activities is, means that his wealth he can be wealthy to maintain their status and power and high and that higher taxation rather than voluntary giving would be more equitable way of distrib redistributing wealth. So we're going to talk about the, the conspiracy theories. In the wake of COVID-19, Bill Gates became the target of numerous conspiracy theories. These unfounded claims include accusations that he created or had prior knowledge of the pandemic, and that he intended to use vaccinations to implant tracking devices. These conspiracy theories have been widely debunked by gaining traction on social media, underscoring the challenges of misinformation in this digital age. And lastly, about the global elite. Gates is often cited as a member of the world's global elite, a small group of extremely wealthy and influential individuals who are sometimes thought to have disproportionate impact on global affairs. This perception combined with his advocacy for global health initiative, including vaccination programs, has made him a focal point for skepticism and conspiracy theorists. So he has a legacy and an impact that is probably unmatched with anyone else in global health, education, climate control. His foundation is impacting so many people on in the world at the moment. So now I'm just going to talk about my conclusion about Bill Gates, a uh, hugely influential guy, controversial in some areas as well. Bill Gates's life and career encapsulates a remarkable journey from a precocious computer-based uh, teenager to a visionary entrepreneur and one of the most influential philanthropic people. He co-founded Microsoft and, and in his leadership, he developed personal computer computing fundamentally transforming technology and business and how individuals interact with digital services under his guidance microsoft became synonymous synonymous with the pc revolution and played a pivotal role in shaping software industry gates's transition to business leadership in the philanthropic area marks a significant shift in his personal persona and impact through the bill and gates foundation he has directed his wealth and influence towards addressing global health issues, poverty, and education, making substantial contributions, particularly in the fight against diseases like malaria and polio. His approach emphasized measurable results and scalable solutions, reflecting his analytical and strategic thinking. However, Gates's immense wealth and power of his foundation have stirred controversy and debate. His influence over public policy and prioritization of certain global in health initiatives and his approach to philanthropic activities have been the subject of scrutiny and criticism. The rise of the misinformation and conspiracy theorists, especially during uh, COVID-19, has led to him being a complicated public figure. In assessing Gates' legacy, it's important to consider both the extraordinary contributions to technology and philanthropic activities. And the broader questions about his wealth, power and social responsibility is part of his life. His story illustrates the complex interplay between innovation, capitalism and philanthropic activities in the modern world. How, how individuals with significant resources can influence global agendas and public policies public policy both positively and in controversial ways his ongoing journey remains a focal point in discussions about the role of wealth in public affairs and the responsibility of the ultra wealthy in addressing global challenges a complicated difficult person to be able to nail down in one area of life that he's had a massive impact on what a great person what an interesting guy and what's your views what do you think is he a controversial 
person? Is he a part of the global elite? I want to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. If you are enjoying this content, please give it a thumbs up. You'll get notified. Hit the bell icon, get notified of all the episodes that are coming up. There are going to be more profiles. There's going to be more interviews with entrepreneurs and business owners as well. So please do check them out. And equally, please do subscribe. It makes a massive influence for the channel. I'd love to get to a wider audience. I'd love to get bigger guests. If there's anyone that you want me to, to interview or do a profile on, do a bi biography on, please do hit it down below. Thank you so much for your time. It's an absolute pleasure. And on to the next one.